Hello, human peoples. You're listening to the podcast network of Gamefully Unemployed. Support us and gain access to great exclusive podcasts like Fox Mulder is a Maniac, Tom and Jeff Watch Batman, Star Trek The Next Futurama, and our latest show, Spiel Boys. Head over to patreon.com slash gamefully unemployed. We do game streaming, movie nights with our patrons every Friday night, and you can even commission your own podcast about anything you want. Literally anything, within reason, and we have to do it. You are quite frankly out of excuses not to go visit patreon.com slash gamefully unemployed. That's patreon.com slash G-A-M-E-F-U-L-L-Y unemployed, which is spelled like it sounds. Halbkasten mit Tom Reimann an David Bell. Hello, everyone. Hello. What about episode of Hypecast? Ooh, it's the show we get hyped about stuff and things. I'm your co-host, Tom Ryman. I'm your other co-host, David Bell. It's Jason. Do I have to introduce myself? See, every yeah, show is do. different. Hi, yeah. I'm Jason Pargin, sitting in, in the in the third chair here in mm. the Hypecast studio in New York, at the top of New the York. Hi- top of the Hypecast Tower. That's yep. right, hype tower. <laughs> right. Top floor. Everybody knows. We built it the right tallest. over. T- we built it right on top of the 9/11 memorial. Yeah, yeah. They weren't using the space. <laughs> no one said anything. No. Uh, Jason, thank you so much for being on. Welcome, welcome to the hype, to the the the, the yeah the hype tower, the hype yeah, dome. Hype tower. Can we have a dome too? Probably somewhere we should have a dome. Well, those cool. it's good to diversify. Vegas. Spheres covered covered oh, in an yeah. HD screen <laughs> that just terrifies everyone for three miles in every direction. Yeah. I I need to I really want to drive to Las Vegas and get a room right across from that terrifying dome <laughs> and just I don't know do like three hits of acid and just lose my goddamn and just mind. Just stare in at the dome room. for just thirteen stare hours. At the dome. Yeah, I was on. Uh, Jack O'Brien's uh, Daily Zeitgeist show, and he had just come back from Las Vegas, and he said, "You do not need to do the acid." He said, the, <laughs> "He said the screens on that side of that thing are such high definition that it projects in a higher definition than the reality around it." Oh God! If that makes sense, because a, a building that far in the distance would be blurry to your eyes, but that building is projecting an ultra clear 4K whatever resolution. So it is clearer than the stuff around it. So it looks like it has been photoshopped into your reality and they will sometimes make it a giant eyeball. Yeah, a, they sure will. Or a giant basketball. I was a basketball, but he was there because he was they were covering a like an NBA summer tournament or something. And he says it is just the weirdest, most hateful thing. <laughs> it looks evil. It does look evil. To work uh, in a plug for my books in the universe of the sci-fi novels that I write and the one that I'm here to promote, that is one of the dystopian features of their city <laughs> is that the buildings yeah. are skinned head to toe in these crystal clear LED screens and they can just run advertisements that scroll across the entire skyline and everybody hates it. Uh, and <laughs> I did not know this thing was being constructed Weirdly enough, I did not know anything about this project until they turned it on. And then yeah, suddenly I on actually, Twitter, it's like, oh, there's an orb in the middle of Las Vegas. I saw it getting built when I was there and it being built. Obviously, it didn't look like much. And so I like really hand waved it at the time. I was like, look at that. It looks like shit. And then they turn it on. and It's like, oh, OK, never mind. Oh, it's like chaos um, magic. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I love I love futurist shit like that because it's that nice little reminder that we are in fact living in the future that I thought about when I was a kid. Um, but going back to that book, Jason, what is that book called? One that way? is now up for pre-order is called Zoe is Too Drunk for This Dystopia. It is the third Zoe Ash novel. They are episodic. If you for some reason want to start with this one, you can. The other two are... You can easily find them just by Googling Zoe Ash novels. I'm sure it will be the top result. 
Yes. They're a delight, too. Yeah, they're so, great. Yeah, people should check them out. Uh, I, I love the, the, the thought experiment of all the, all the super online dipshits. What are they going to be like 30 years from now when they have all the money? Oh, yeah. That's just the funnest part. Of, one of the funnest parts of it for me. Oh, yeah. And that's a good answer. And I just, I don't know. Again, I just like the dumb future. Yeah, like I, dumb I, future I, I've been talking great. about this for a while. I really want self-driving cars, even though I know deep inside me that those would be a disaster. Right. It's like, like I want, it's like an I want unworkable, the version where it works. Right. Yeah. It, it would just be a full on Armageddon if we actually had yeah. flying cars or fly. Yeah. Flying cars. I was going to say too, where it's like in my head, I want flying cars. But right now, if someone was like, here, we, I made you a flying car, get in it. I would say no. Uh, because you know, right? Because he'd be like one of the he'd be like the death sub guy. Yeah, yeah. It would be <laughs> it would be Elon Musk making a flying car, yeah. and it's like, no, I'm, never mind. I'm good. We have had many but cars wanted... leave me by the side of the road because a a single part malfunctioned somewhere deep in the vehicle. Yep. That is a big big difference. As <laughs> as much as that has caused me a panic attack before, when at two a.m. a car has just rumbled to a stop and something has broken in the engine at least i was not at ten thousand feet <laughs> when that happened yeah or honestly even 30 feet right <laughs> <laughs> no matter how many feet up it's gonna be a bigger problem for sure yeah. yeah can you imagine like a used flying car like i think i always think about my friend who got his first car as a teenager and 10 minutes on the highway the car exploded <laughs> like literally exploded <laughs> in it, and he lost the hair on his head and it's just like, yeah, that that plus flying, that, that, that's going to be did, fun. That did happen. I mean, my car didn't explode, but I did like the first car I bought was this gigantic Crown Victoria and no joke, driving it home from getting it, it the engine like <laughs> just blew and there was all this steam shooting out of it. it. It's perfect. Just, yeah, rumbling to a stop at the side of the road. Yep. But then, yeah, flying. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Even if I was five feet in the air in that car. Yeah, there's no amount of feet in the air that I'll accept. Be a real problem. Yeah, I want it. I want it, you know, emotionally speaking. I think it's a good idea that we should go for. But, uh, you know, I know. I, I, a part of me knows better, I guess. Um, I just know so, there'd, be, uh, there'd be way more catastrophic car accidents in the Jetsons universe than they show us. Oh, yeah. People would disintegrate. That's the thing. <laughs> It would be it like it'd be it's it would just be two cars colliding into dust. <laughs> well, it's it, um, it would be a car crashing into the thirtieth floor of a skyscraper. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. Uh, Good God. Um, oh yeah. Sorry. Now I'm imagining that idea be, of like it, being be, at work, and you could at any point have a car crash through the window of your office or several, no matter what floor, because any fender bender is now coming screaming to earth. Yeah. So. Yeah, this sounds awesome. <laughs> we should do this. We'd, uh, <laughs> we'd, we should definitely we'd, do we'd this. We'd accelerate the end of humanity, that's for sure. Yeah, but what an end. What now, an end. Now, to segue this into movie trailers. Thank you. <laughs> it is impossible. In hours before we started recording this, it came out that the actors have gone on strike. The Screen Actors Guild, yeah. which is the that's first true. time yeah. since 1960 something that the actors Damn. and the writers have both been on strike at the same time. The futurism element of this is that one of the big, big disputes is actually the role of AI because the studio's secretly believe that five or ten years from now they will be able to make tv shows with the involvement of minimal or no people yeah and where they can grab the likeness of an actor that they have purchased for some very small amount of money and wrap it onto a face and have it being acted out by a script that was written by an ai because after all all of these stories are all the same really yeah um and so they are trying to they are absolutely resisting putting that into any deals that are made. They're willing to give on lots and lots of issues, including pay residual, stuff like that. But when it comes to AI, AI likeness rights, anything that would guarantee the rights of the humans involved, they are, this is as intractable a strike as we've probably had in our, maybe in our lifetimes. 
And I think it's primarily over this because they see the whole yeah. business changing 15 years from now or maybe sooner, not today, but that in 2035 that they could easily get have shows that are all profit because they don't have to pay anybody any anything. They just have to pay, right. pay the computer. And um, then it doesn't matter if they're good because <laughs> they're like, yeah, everything can bomb, I guess, if we're not, you know, spending a lot of money on it. It's it's wild to me because I also I think you're right that like they're really gun ho about, about AI. I also and I, I mean well, did you I see, hate saying this. Guess what the offer was, right? Yeah. Okay. Well they the the like one day's work to scan their face. But like I think they're also not right that it's the future. I know it's it's always oh, no. feels weird to say something isn't the future because you don't want to be the person saying the internet isn't the future, you know? But I really do think like the studios are fighting for something that in 10 years, it'll be like 3D. Like imagine if the studios were fighting for 3D this hard. And it's like, I don't know how to tell you this, but audiences want to see like real people do things uh, yeah, more yeah, than like, anything else. Yeah. It's the head it's, of it's your very cre silly. creative business is a money person or a venture capitalist or somebody that came from money in some other industry they will forever be confused about what audiences want out of art, which is yeah. a human connection and a human They don't understand it at all. It's just a they product just to them. see it as content, the same as yeah. like, it's like, well, this is something, and we've, without getting into it, we've run into this at places we have mutually worked together at, mm -hmm. where the, the bosses yep. did not, it's like, this is a content mill, we just have to fill a channel and they could not understand why there needs to be so much, so many hours of labor devoted to it. Cause it's like, well, it's just stuff that goes up on a screen. Like, you know, and it's, it's like, well, the, there's individual YouTubers out there making millions of dollars and they don't have production budget. It's like, yeah, but they're personalities that people it's can personality with. driven. Yeah. That's a whole different thing. But yeah, it's like yeah. the, it's, they look at it in the only way they look at it as if this number goes up, our profit goes up. So it's like, if we put out more, it doesn't matter how good it is or anything about it. It's just, if we have more of it, this number goes up. And then the number suddenly goes down and they don't know why. They don't understand I think why. A, it's because you're shoveling is, out shit, man. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. And this, <laughs> and this is a bigger conversation and we should probably get to trailers, but it's also the fact that like they created an unsustainable system with streaming for themselves and then they can't, it's unheard of, unthinkable that they would then cut pay for the executives. That's what it seems like. There's a lot of like, we need to make more money. We're not making enough money. So let's find ways to cut pay for the people under us uh, and not the people who made the decisions that put us in this position. That's it's very frustrating. That is every business, every single oh, industry. Yeah. 100%. Labor is, always, ours, la labor is always the first cut. It's I true. Um, but I, I wanted to bring that up without, I didn't want to start too much of a tangent there, but the issue is that <laughs> on future Hypecast episodes, a very major element is going to be projects that are being delayed due to the strike. For yeah. example, Deadpool has, you know, that's on our dock down here later on. Well, Deadpool 3 has stopped shooting because obviously yeah. they're not finished shooting all the actors and plus actors cannot do publicity during the strike. So that yep. means all of your entertainment news, all of that stuff. All the interviews, all that stuff, it all dries up instantly. And this could stretch on for months. So mm -hmm. it is going to be a big, big subject. Um, like some shows like House of the Dragon, that's being shot in the UK. That will continue filming season two. That's They are not subject to the strike. So it right. is going to be a big thing over the next getting into August, September, whatever, as you continue to do these shows and as trailers and promo stuff rolls out they're going to have to start adjusting their calendars now because they have to know that Deadpool 3 is not going to make its release date. That And so they're going to start reshuffling the same with COVID. They're not going to wait and then suddenly just not ha have anything. They're going to have to start spacing stuff out very, very soon. Yeah. Um, you, mentioned, you mentioned COVID. I was about to say with you coming on today, we sort of accidentally made you like our de facto guest for when everything gets delayed. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, th this is going to yeah. this is going to take effect much much sooner. It's not a thing where I know that movies take years to make. This is not a thing where there's going to suddenly be a void of content two years from now. It's not it's not going to be like that. They're going to have to start working in delays and reshuffling right away. And so when we report on that, I want to say ahead of time, 
we are not complaining about the actors having gone on strike or the writers having no, gone on yeah. strike. Oh, not at all. No, of course damn not. it. We're going to have to wait six more months to see Deadpool three because of these spoiled writers. Uh, it's not, <laughs> that's not it at all, but that's going to dictate a lot of what you see. Remember it was a previous writer's strike that basically gave us the reality TV boom because it shows right. like cops and stuff like that got rushed into production because they thought they didn't need writers. So it has changed the face of the landscape many times. And this strike with what's at stake and the fact that, as you guys mentioned, the business model is fundamentally broken. This could really change the landscape. And this could really drag on for a long time, maybe longer than you may think. That in that yeah. time, I think you're going to see Netflix buy up a ton of Korean dramas and movies. Oh, yeah. They're going to scour foreign markets for stuff to try to fill to fill the channel because stuff's going to dry up real soon. Yeah, it I think the key there is always remember who, who the problem is here, right? Like it's yeah, it's not the people getting like, uh, you know, 50 cent residual checks. Like there are people who have the power to end this strike and it's not the workers. Uh and yeah, I don't I no, it's I, I really don't know what's going to happen here because it does feel like we're at this this turning point, right? Where it's like we can either Sue's could either like you know do the good thing here, but more likely they're just going to keep holding out, like like we've already read about where they're playing to hold out until writers just go broke uh, and which actors, which is fucking wild, and actors now, yeah, because yeah. most actors are not rich. Most actors no. are most actors are working actors, meaning yeah. they most actors are not making Tom Cruise money. It's yeah, it's, we, a, it's, we a, have, a, it's a job they do every day for them. You know, it's just their nine to five. All three of us have friends that are actors uh, that have done Hollywood work. I think all three of us have friends who who are writers who have done Hollywood work and who, while doing that work, were also bartending or yeah yeah doing something else on the, like they had it age i'm sorry while they were doing the work like that's how little it paid if you're writing something for you know whatever adult mm -hmm. swim or one of these like deep cable something like that it just doesn't because you may you may work on it for a couple months and then you may not get another paying gig yeah. for a year yep. um, that is and that's just that's the funny part before the where strike. they're like we're yeah, where they're like, we're holding out, so you'll lose, you'll you'll run out of like money, and it's like, what do you think we've been doing? Yeah. <laughs> like that's why they're on strike; they're not getting any money, so it's yeah, like they're already, no, be we're fine. already broke. Yeah, it's, yeah, they're it's... already doing side jobs. Um, but we should we should get into trailers. We, we should. should really. Yeah. Um, and we were going to talk about this either way. So yeah, it's it was like, going to eh. happen. So we did it up top. Whatever. We did it up top. <laughs> let's talk about. Well, let's thank some producers first. Um. Yeah, we can do Cause, that. Because uh, they're lovely people, and they help us out greatly. Uh, these are these are our Hypecast producers, starting with at Nerd Numbers. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you to Zero Charisma. Thank you. Thank you to Aaron Burser. Thank you. Thank you to AJ. Thank you. Thank you to Andrew Howe, Deck the Halls with Blood. Thank you. Thank you to Asking Seven. Thank you. Thank you to Bob Grenville. Thank you. Thank you to Bootler Boodles. Thank you so much. All right, let me Thank jump in you. here. Thank you to Brian or Tom Knows. Thank, Thank you. Thank you to Brockway Loves the Meat Millie. Thank, Thank you to you. Burrito Wants You to Drink Water, Hit the Gym, and Do the Ska, because they loves y'all. Thank you to Chester's Prophet. Thank you. Thank you to Christopher Robert Sparts Esquire. Thank you. Thank you to Dan Hackroyd. Mm -hmm. Thank you to Davy. Thank you to Davy, the ghost of East Las Vegas, Francis. Thank you. Barely got that one out. And thank you to David Knife Boot Henson. Knife Boot Henson. All right. All right. All trailers. Right. All right. Trailers. We did the strike. It, it's <laughs> funny. I didn't even put the strike in the news because it just happened. Right. It happened like an uh, hour or two before we recorded this. I probably should have thought to. Um, but we, we have something even bigger than the strike. The thing that's going to change cinema as we know it. Mm -hmm. And that's the Wonka trailer. Wonka. The sure gritty is. Wonka. Well, that's Sorry. what's funny is, is we were making that joke for two years that it's going to be the gritty Wonka movie, and it very much is not gritty. <laughs> no, it's not that gritty. Hugh Grant as Thumpa Loompa, which feels like a Mad Lib. Like, it feels like they, you know, they shuck a bunch of names up, and then they just pulled names out. Uh, but I don't, I, I don't know. It's fine, I guess. You know, Hugh Grant, Willy Wonka, Oompa Loompa. Sure. What do you guys think of this? Well, it's Timothy Chalamet as... Willy Wonka, is young Wonka. Willy Wonka, and yeah. is playing it much in the same way 
I would play Willy Wonka in that I'm not an actor and I don't have the ability <laughs> to convey any kind of like different personality or anything. He's kind of just playing him as a guy. Like He's just saying the words. And man, I thought this looked bad. Bad to the point of where the, the kind of bad not where it's like, wow, it's so weird. Why did they like it it's where it seems like they took no risks at all and it kind of seems like they've just made a very boring Willy yeah. Wonka movie and there's no style or there's no there's like, no color uh, in the the darkness that came with the it, see and I'm starting to think maybe Willy Wonka in that story is actually not that good maybe we only liked Gene Wilder's portrayal well, of Wonka <laughs> yeah I wanted to start with that because um there's this funny thing that happens with like a certain a certain generation of cartoons where they all had Willy Wonka spoofs, right? And parodies. And I think Willy Wonka, it was like, what, 74, I want to say? Um, it was mid-70s, that first that's, movie. That's, I think that's right, yeah. And I don't think, like, my generation was like, I had uh, older cousins and older siblings watching. Like, it's more of a Gen X uh, movie, that first movie, in terms of, like, when it came out and the nostalgia for it. I have like secondhand nostalgia and nostalgia through like parodies almost Uh, kind of the way wizard of Oz is like got parodied. And then there was that, you know, the Johnny Depp one, the Tim Burton one, which I don't think did amazing. I looked it up and it didn't do that good. Like it made a couple million, a couple hundred million dollars, but like, it didn't like explode. There's a reason why they haven't made one in a while. And then this one just looks like a dark gritty one. That's like, I don't quite know who they're aiming it at. It's like, are you aiming this at like kids? Because I don't think kids care. Um, I think maybe Gen Xers with kids, uh, but it just seems like a property that's kind of like like what you're saying, which is like the only thing that ever stood out was Gene Wilder, uh, and how fucking twisted that first one was, and that's kind of it. Yeah, crazy um, sets of that of his factory, which again you're not seeing here. Yes colorful again can't stress color yeah it's uh (laughs) what you said i was we were talking about this the other day i i think um but just like how much of pop culture is just based on references made by previous gen like like you said secondhand nostalgia like how many cartoons that we grew up watching would make references to elvis or like nixon or willy wonka or uh, you know the sixty four thousand yeah. dollar question, like things like, like okay. these extremely Ninja dated doing a Humphrey Bogart impression. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's like, so as kids are absorbing that, but like, yeah. I, so I think there is an element of that of of where it's overestimating the uh, the 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 hold that I guess Willy Wonka has in people's hearts. Um, yeah, but I did that said. I do think like. I don't think it necessarily looks bad. I think it looks like it's intentionally doing a thing. Um, I saw that it's from the director of Paddington. Yeah, that's a good sign. So it feels like like Paddington is very much also this tone where it's like this quasi... I mean, it's not the same tone as the original Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, but because uh, like you said, it's that that kind of weird, kind of twisted, like roll doll, like maniacal bent to it. Um, right. In addition to Gene Wilder's kind of at least a little bit scary performance, but like it, this feels like in tone with Paddington, which is just like this very earnest, sweet kind of fairy tale heightened reality type movie, which is what this looks like in this trailer. Yeah. That also doesn't feel like Willy Wonka. It's um, not, like, it doesn't, it doesn't. I'm, it's it, weird to say, yeah. but like, where's the cruelty? Right, what's a I need the cruelty. Right. Like the part of, right. Like part of why that movie is famous is because it's so fucking twisted, right? Like it's just yeah. so uncomfortably I, bizarre for children and yet it's this it's children's also, movie it also has like a moral implication where i i think of like okay the first willy wonka was like you know these are spoiled kids right and then the 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 poor kid is not asking for much is rewarded etc even the johnny depp one seemed to like play with those ideas and then they did the thing where it's like his father was a dentist who like you know like they explored Forbade the reason he was so candy. Yeah, it's, right and know. this one they have people who are like chocolate makers are supposed to be serious and it's like what like it also doesn't feel like grounded in any sort of like 
moral or like re- reality where it's like it's tr- it's like creating this weird world where people are mad at him for being a, ch- a like a zany chocolate maker uh and and i it's just like it feels less accessible uh as a story that they're pitching here that like well, i mean that's just classic big business versus the little guy right i could see that yeah, that if they're doing that and it just isn't coming out as much in the trailer, because that could be good. And you're like, again, director Paddington. So there's like hope just in that alone. Right. But this trailer is just not doing it for me. Otherwise, it doesn't like yeah, it's leaving me with that question of like, why are they even making this? Like, what's the story that needs to be told here? That's totally fair. I just I feel feel like this this feels intentional to me um mm-hmm. whether or not it works who knows but it feels intentional yeah and i, I did i, no I did idea. finally watch paddington like two months ago uh and it's great it's a great movie <laughs> it's a delightful film oh yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> everybody loves it this also has very solid casts so i don't know yeah got, who kn- got, <sighs> got mr bean in there you got that mr bean it's yeah like i barely Olivia coleman uh, yeah oh yeah that's true keegan michael key i saw in there yeah yeah he, he comes he comes shot. delivering yeah a joke in there yeah i don't know i think I, my ability to uh, my capacity to be excited for willy wonka i don't know we'll see well again yeah that's the thing is they have to kind of repitch it right like uh because i don't think people are inherently like excited Psyched for this about one. willy wonka yeah maybe not i don't know yeah <laughs> uh any other thoughts on this one nah. all right let's talk about napoleon this one uh, <laughs> snuck snuck up on me i knew this was happening but i didn't know there'd be like a yeah you know, a whole yeah thing. I, I didn't know it was like coming this soon <laughs> like yeah uh thanksgiving and also when is wonka out should we be telling people when the movie christmas out? uh wonka's out christmas yeah thanksgiving is perfect for napoleon because it's like you know all you uncles get together on thanksgiving watch the napoleon movie uh, like it's, yeah. it's it's a dad movie right you're, you're gonna just, peep, you can yeah. dad the hell out on this movie this is maximum yeah. dad movie <laughs> so napoleon is being played by joaquin phoenix yeah and the film is directed by this is a uh, ridley scott ridley scott, ridley scott. <laughs> so it has you know what I would love if I went to sit down to this uh, like three hour long historical epic and found out that Ridley Scott had chosen to do it exactly in the style of RRR. <laughs> like, and I mean, exactly like people just flying through the air and just this, that, that would be awesome. Right totally. on each other's shoulder. Napoleon has a motorcycle. <laughs> a motorcycle that he beats someone to death with, with his bare hands. Yeah. Uh, it would be quite the surprise, but oh yeah. Otherwise, I feel like I'm thrilled for all the people who like this kind of thing. I can't remember the last one, the last movie in this genre, the last non RRR movie in this genre that I have enjoyed, <laughs> where it's like a historical epic. You know what I'm saying? Where it's like, oh, we're going to get to witness the Battle of Yorktown on the big screen. Right or here's oh, Pearl yeah. Harbor on the big screen. Like the last big historical war epic. I can't remember the last one that I've loved. Yeah, they, they I, get um... they get pretty tough for me too, where it's just like, man, they kind of, like I understand this is significant and this is like well shot and all these people are working real hard to put this together and it looks great, but boy, they all look the same to me, kind of. Uh, yeah, I can tell you actually because it's funny. I, I was literally about to say 1970 because here's the weird thing about war movies now remember in like the 2000s like in the mummy returns or lord of the rings where you're like oh my god look at that cgi battle that's amazing um and now i'm like give me give me real get, like hire a thousand extras um i'm not wowed by cgi battles which is nobody's fault um but it's just funny that now when a war movie stands out it's when they do something that's unique and real feeling like 1917 yeah. where it's like, Oh, it's made to look like one continuous shot with a bunch of like practical effects and CGI. Don't get me and wrong. It's, it's also, but... it, it's also not really a war epic. It's like a horror movie almost. No. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Dunkirk is another one where I was like, they did real shit and like, you can kind of feel it. Um, I don't know. This feels like it might be on that. Like I'm, I'm guessing Ridley Scott probably did some pretty wild stuff to make this but also like yeah i'm with you guys i'm not really a napoleon fan 
I'm not a you know Napoleon Stan, and I well, uh, <laughs> I uh, not really in uh, into Napoleon. Is he the the Bill and Ted's? Was he in Bill and Ted? Yeah, yeah. the Ziggy Piggy. Right, well, they, t- that. they take they him should, to Waterloo. If they include that in this, yes. I would be so happy. If like halfway through he gets abducted by Bill and Ted and goes to Waterloo. Uh, <laughs> With, that would be incredible with ted's but little I'm, brother yeah yeah but i'm guessing they're not going to do that and i'm i'm guessing it's a very serious and, and like he's ridley guys made good ones of these this won't be bad like oh you guys yeah are saying no, it's it, just yeah i, I think, takes takes a lot of effort to watch if i'm thinking about like the last historical epic that i thought was good it would uh, or that stands out of my mind it's probably kingdom of heaven like his director's cut version mm-hmm. of it so i mean did if, he do alexander no that was oliver stone Oh, okay, yeah, that was also good. Yeah, the the um, the direct the final cut version the, of it. The d- final cut, yeah, uh, yeah, the- yeah. You know me, I love big fucking long. I love David Lean, yeah. like, um, but I think part of what makes an epic, um, kind of work personally for me is like a weirdly like smaller scale or like again like technical achievements like that idea of like oh we're gonna get thousands of extras and put them in one place and maybe this does that and i'll get more excited for it but right now i'm just like i don't know man this seems like a lot of work for us to watch yeah i mean i'm interested in it i like ridley scott uh i don't know a whole lot about napoleon uh uh this is i mean objectively this is going to be good right probably, probably. well this what yeah. i was what i was going to say is like his his performance seems really funny in this trailer oh, like yeah. joaquin phoenix's it's just he's just very very quiet like in every line he delivers and he's always like I, he's always like he's wearing that hat in like every he's single hat. scene <laughs> what if he did like an outrageous accent and like did like a cartoon version <laughs> just again bill and ted version yeah i i respect i actually really respect the fact that he's not doing a voice fucking at all <laughs> it's just i like, respect whatever when movies yeah, yeah are like listen let's not fucking try yeah <laughs> they'll just make fun of us anyway it's the robin I, hood prince of thieves of it all oh man i know I, I need to hear joaquin phoenix do an over-the-top french chef accent yeah <laughs> something for napoleon <laughs> <laughs> cast tom hardy you coward mm-hmm. anyway get him in here just, he'll yeah. do something he'll do something fucking nuts he's gonna do pepe le pew or something <laughs> this will win a bunch of uh, awards it'll be there at oscar yeah. season i assume that's why they're releasing it near the end of the year it'll be right there yeah. in prime oscar territory yeah, and I, honestly, I will try to watch it because, again, it's probably very good. Which if the... Um, I like the scene where he's shooting the pyramids because it doesn't seem like there's a purpose in that scene. No, I'm sure I think, there is. No, I think he's just But being, it just looks like... I think he's literally just being a dick there, right? <laughs> really? I think That's so. That's incredible. I th- I remember. Re- I mean, I think this is apocryphal, but like you read, like, oh, did you know Napoleon shot the nose off the Sphinx, even though I don't think that's actually true. Right. But no, like you hear not. that... Yeah, oh, Okay. I think uh, they've added like you, that to this movie, though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's just... They do show in the trailer that the Sphinx already has its nose off before he fucking right. shoots a cannon into one of the pyramids. <laughs> so he's just being a prick. I think so. Um, who knows? <laughs> he's got the hat. You can't wear a hat like that and be a prick. That's too much. I think it's all you can be in a yeah, hat that's like that. True. That's true. God, yeah. what is... The hat oh, made him need... that way. Like you take yeah. the hat off Napoleon, he's like, "Oh, thank God, finally! Please don't put it back on." <laughs> it's like the brain it's slugs in Futurama. Hat. Yeah, <laughs> this movie opens with him being having the hat put on him as a baby, and it like fuses to his flesh. <laughs> ah, fuck it. Yeah, who cares? Yeah, now I'm I'm sure it'll be good. One other thing is, at least in this trailer, the music seems like it's a real banger. It's it's that trend of like. And like the music seemed like kind of electronic, like out of time a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm I'm kind of a fan of that. I like that we're doing this with movies. I like lately I've seen that a few times. And I wonder if it's going to be one of those like really embarrassing things we do in the future where we'll look back on and go, "That's really silly. Why'd we do that?" But right now, I really like it. Yeah. Um. So I'll definitely be writing to this soundtrack. Um. Speaking of soundtracks, our next trailer is for Bob Marley, One Love. This is a Bob Marley 
biopic. Uh, anybody know anything about Bob Marley? No, uh, no, actually, not too much. Hmm. Um, I mean, he lived a more interesting life than I think ninety percent of the musicians were making biopics about. So 100%. I'll definitely give him that. This one again will be nominated for and hopefully win a whole bunch of awards. I'm weird about musician biopics and that I don't know that I've ever seen a good one. And oh, I'm right there with you. The ones that I gosh, the the um Bohemian Rhapsody winning the awards that it won and like they rewrote Freddie Mercury's life to like change out key motivation to make it fit. It's like there, there's a point. I understand it's not a work of journalism. You're going to say, well, no movie is realistic. That's exactly right. what you're about to say. And in, in, in that voice, but, but <laughs> gotcha. in the case of a, of a biopic where you're the, the essence of the, the, the character, like the central motivating feature of their personality, you've changed it to make the movie work better. It's like, why didn't you just write a fictional musician then? Like, like right. why? I don't understand the point when you've got like members of this person's family coming out and saying, well, that's like, we disavow this movie that has, you know, a, you totally, you've watered down their personality or you've smoothed over the rough parts or whatever. And that always happens. And yeah, I don't get it. I can't remember the last one of these that has made money. They always get the Oscar nominations. The Academy loves these movies. But what's the They're... last big hit biopic that usually it's one that has a fantastic soundtrack that people love, right? Probably Walk the Line, right? That one people really liked. I'm right there with you in that I feel like biopics are top down usually or uh, musician biopics specifically or whenever it's someone who's famous not for what they did in their life. Does that make sense? Where it's like a, a celebrity that's just known for being like, you know, an actor or talented because they're starting with, well, we need to make a movie about them. And then they go, okay, well, what is it going to be about? And it's like, shouldn't you know what it's about before you decide to make a movie about it? Um, and so the, they often are either like, like you're saying, they lie a lot or they feel kind of dull. Uh, because it's like, well, this isn't really that compelling of a story. Um, I feel like Walk the Line was the last one people liked. And I found that movie to be very dull because I was like, well, this isn't a br he's, he didn't really do much. Um, whereas this one, there's like fucking shots fired in this trailer. And I'm like, oh, OK, this is like if they, they might be lying, like you're saying, but at least this one looks uh, interesting. Right. OK, like, listeners, we are not claiming that they. They have lied about there being assassination attempts on on Bob Marley's life. Well, we are, it would be right, but... wild if if they just <laughs> added that to the movie to spice it up. That would be oh man! If they did that in a that bunch be, of biopics too, that would be pretty irresponsible. Yeah. Well, that's what they <laughs> did like, in the, yeah. the Weird Al biopic that was up for, right. that was on Hulu or whatever, and it, oh, yeah, it, yeah, it gets it gets gunned down. <laughs> it ends with him like being murdered in 1986 or something like that. Yeah, see, that's the, the yeah that that feels like the right way. Or, or again, you find a very interesting story, you know. And Bob Marley does seem like an interesting story. It's just that c cynicism of the fact that they crank these out no matter what. Um, and so, you know, I I I, I I'm trying to think of a. I guess Lords of Chaos is technically a biopic. And that movie is fucking interesting. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah, because that's about the band Mayhem, uh, a Norwegian black metal band that, uh, well, go ahead and Google them. Yeah, one of them. And you'll see why you can make a movie about that. <laughs> yeah, one of them murders the other one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and it's, anyway, um, yeah, uh, totally uh, accurate uh, there. 100% was an attempted assassination of Bob Marley. Right. Reading it now, it seems like it, it's exactly as it's portrayed in this trailer. So. Yeah, so that, again, that's a movie worth making. Uh, that's what this feels like. This is one where I'm like, well, shit, it looks like there's uh, some actual and stories it was to tell specific, here. You know? It was specifically related to his music, so. Yeah. Even if it wasn't, it, right. it's still worth uh, talking about. Right, for sure. right, right, right. This right. is the director and, of King Richard as well, which also honestly seemed like a biopic worth t talking about. Um, 
it seemed like there was something to say there that was right genuinely and, and interesting yeah and they're like two of the most singular athletes of the last two or three decades and like you know bob marley yeah. of course a big iconic figure so it's like obviously it's weird to I, I was gonna say this earlier but it's weird to me that like there hasn't been like a big bob marley biopic you know right yeah it's it's weird the things we pick and choose because again it's like johnny cash biopic yeah, let's let's green light that immediately. Bob Marley, man, nah, we gotta sit on that. Yeah. And it, it it's and it's like really Johnny Cash didn't do really yeah. much except for lots yeah. of heroin. Like, yeah, he just was... sort of like made songs where he lied about things he did. Yeah. Like <laughs> that's it. It's it's and that's cool. nothing against him, but it's not right. it's not interesting, you know? Um And that's it's, honestly it's that's like, the case with most musicians. They're just like Yeah kind of artists who have the same kind of demons as anybody else and it's just about yeah I, most it's of the time to make. right outside of the things they create it's not a terribly remarkable life usually right and it it's hard to to like weed through these because i feel like studios just have long lists of musicians that they are absolutely going to make biopics of no mm. matter what and then there's people who are seeking out real stories uh, that are worth telling and like it's hard to tell the difference with these trailers it feels like somebody making an uh, a biopic about like gary sinise <laughs> you know you, you get what i'm saying like it's like for, for and i'm not talking about the, the bob marley one i'm talking about for like a most musician biopics where it's just like right you pick a person that's like famous for being creative but like there's not like it's not like cute. It's just like not like a movie oh, people, story. People have tried to kill Gary Sinise several times. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, like the the big dramatic moments are things that we've seen in our friends' lives. It's like, well, they, right. they right. broke it off with their sweetheart from high school because they got too famous and and they had an emotional breakup, and then he did drugs for a while. It's like, well, I could. Yeah. <laughs> I know people who've done that. It's not like going yeah. to the moon. It's you know it. Right. Yeah. This is kind of just everyone's life, man. Except this guy, this, it got incredibly wealthy at some point in the middle of all of it. Right. There's a lot of my friends who went through that stuff just stayed poor the whole time before. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah. it's like, so the that's, movie's like, but don't worry, they're rich. And don't worry, they, they become rich in the end. I'm like, oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was worried there for a second about yeah. Johnny Cash. <laughs> but again, uh bob bartley seems like they got they got they got a story to tell here so oh yeah if, if of any biopic he seems the and most the actor playing him is nailing it at least in the trailer well they'll, they'll all get nominated this so this is their it's understood when this is made this will be the awards movie uh and oh, yeah. maybe it may be great People who love Bob Marley who are really into him. They may have been waiting for this movie for 20 years. And so I'm extremely happy for them. Uh, yeah. It's just yeah, as it looks good as a, as a critic, I have to, I have to admit there's some genres I just can't get into. I, I just can't. Mm. Now oh, I, yeah. st Even I still, in, uh... to be clear, I still enjoy these movies. I, I like watching uh, musician biopics um, just, just because I'm, uh, in, I'm interested in, in mu uh, music history uh, popular music history um, yeah so i tend to watch most of them <laughs> yeah i i also can't even if i like or um, know about the person i still like sid and nancy which is amazing performances yeah uh, i haven't watched that in a while but it's also like well this guy's just a fucking scumbag he's just like, a murderer like yeah, he's, he's just, just a murderer, murderer. <laughs> yeah so like, it's like i don't know man i don't i don't need to know about his life. I'm not gonna feel bad for Sid Vicious. <laughs> yeah, it's right there in his name. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, let's talk about this twisted metal show because this sure. show fascinates me. Um, I I've been I've been like on and off excited about it because I think it's the funniest thing. Where it's like, who allowed this to happen? Um, it it should be a movie in my opinion, but whatever. It seems like it's they're not doing like like. They're doing like a, a like a Mad Max and not like them actually like being I, like let's all go to France and fight in our cars, yes. which is stupider. But come on, do the thing. 
uh, to the game. It seems like they're kind of doing it a little bit because a little bit. They, when he's talking to Nev Campbell, she's like, I will, I'll grant you whatever wish you want. And that's, you know, that's how the game works. If you guys have never played the Twisted Metal right. games, it's a car vehicular combat game, but it's it's also like basically like a fighting game. It's like a tournament style and they're all competing for this uh, magic mysterious dude named Calypso who will grant the, win- the winner a single wish, but he monkey paws the fuck out of you when you do the wish. So... It seems like they might still have that in there in this, which uh, is interesting to Only me. Only it's Nev Campbell, yeah. Right. Um, I, I'm still, yeah. on, I'm still on board. I'm actually like I, I see in the notes what you guys have said. Uh, so actually, I guess I'll let you guys go first then. Oh, I'm falling a little less in love. That's all. Go on, Jason. It's that tone of it's the Deadpool tone where yeah. every single line is a punchline. Every single line of dialogue is just, at least that's the way it's paced in the trailer. But it's, if you've seen the Deadpool movies, and I don't know if this shares writers with the Deadpool series, but it is very much in that extreme violence, you know, hopefully well choreographed violence. And then the dialogue is just punchline, 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 punchline. Either you like that or you don't. I personally feel like the Deadpool movies, the two of them get get it right about 40% of the time. I feel like there's a lot of... There's so much like Ryan Reynolds improv in there. There's so much where you can tell that they just put together five different alternate jokes for a take and just went with the one they thought was funniest. And it just, there's no like, they have emotional moments and they have like an emotional through line in those movies with his, his dead girlfriend or whatever, but that's not much. Usually the rhythm stays at exactly the same point all the way through. And either you like that or you don't. My issue is, is that in a longish Deadpool movie, you start to really feel it. And this is a series. So right. maybe 30 minutes at a time, it's fine. I think if I tried to binge watch this, I, I think I would start to hate myself and everyone around me. I think it would it's... get old really fast. What kind of, yeah, I, it's, uh, I think the, I've seen this complaint about the 2016 Ghostbusters or Zombieland I've had this issue with, which is that it feels like it's about, uh, quantity over quality, where it's just like, we're going to blast so many jokes at you Mm -hmm. and they're all going to be like kind of mid and then there'll be some good ones, but there's so many and like, I, I feel like everybody is just sort of aware they're what they're doing it doesn't matter. Like in, in the sense that like everybody seems to be aware they're in a comedy. And so like I don't know, I love Twisted Metal, so I'll see this. Uh I'll give it a shot. But I kind of wish they like made had more fun with taking it more seriously, um, and made it kind of more room to breathe. At least again, the trailer it's it's harder to tell. But I know what you're saying, which is like, I always get this vibe from this um, Deadpool zombie land where it's like, I feel like the jokes are always like a little bit almost stale. They're always like kind of on the cusp of like memes or jokes that are kind of already done with. Uh, and it just feels like they, they're they blasting, like fire hosing it. Um, and so like... Look, thinking about this, where the first thing they say is they're like, the cities have been walled off. I was try- I was thinking about, um, shit, the director of Dog Soldier made that movie. Um, oh, oh, shit. Um, uh, I'm struggling Doomsday? for his name. Yes. Doomsday, which is a funny movie, and it knows it's funny. Neil Marshall. There um, it is. He made the yeah, new Hellboy. But, yeah, but it also knows to be have the characters like treat it very seriously. And I kind of wish they went more in that direction. Doomsday is a very good example of like a modern version of a John Carpenter. Right. Yeah. Or like class of 1999 where it's like, make the, make like the technology like silly in nineties. You know what I mean? Like Johnny mnemonic, like technology where they're like using these bulky computers, do something that's like kind of tongue in cheek, but also have the characters take it very seriously because it's about an apocalypse and like twisted metal the game everybody was so serious and we could laugh at that right um and so i kind of wish people like they can still understand that it's funny i just don't need everybody to be like joking and having like so self-aware of what's going on that's how it feels at least from this trailer tom you you had you had nice things to say about it 
Yeah, I think no, I I think all that is is accurate that you're saying, uh, you guys. Um, but I like that sometimes. Like I I sure. like to watch something that is just bombarding you with jokes. Um, cause, cause I enjoy like, Deadpool too. Like yeah, I think the Deadpool movies are are pretty good. Um, but I I do agree that it is it's about quantity over quality and a lot of the jokes don't hit they just don't but it's you know within 30 seconds there's another one that kind of hits a little bit so it reminds me a little bit about obviously these it reminds me a little bit of airplane or like the zucker type movies even though right like uh, airplane and naked gun are not this frenetic quite yet just because that wasn't the pace of comedy back then um they are still like just joke joke machines right there's like a joke every every 30 seconds in one of those movies oh, yeah. pretty much. Um, so I don't, you know, I, I, I don't, I like this, that sort of just unabashed silliness sometimes and twisted metal. Why not? It's, it's silly as hell. Like it, yeah. it's, it's maybe not perfectly in tone with the game, but the game was always tongue in cheek. Yeah. I just think there could have been a better version. You yeah, know? Uh, like, yeah. I agree. Yeah. 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 Shoot. Sure, with, with like airplane is that everyone in that is playing it so straight. Right, like like yeah. Leslie Nielsen seals it because he is he thinks he's in a pot boiler drama, like a high right. tension. He thinks he's in it, Poseidon adventure. Yeah, like like none of these people, you know, and some of them are playing it a little bit more broad, but that whole thing rests on him not knowing he's in a goofy movie, and, and that's where I don't know. That, that's what that's what wears out. It's welcome with me with Ryan Reynolds. Is that at some point it's like it's like isn't it stupid that you're watching this movie? It's like. Well, it's your movie. You could have, you could have made it differently. If you, it's like, look, look how how dumb this superhero trope is. Like, well, then don't don't include it. I don't know, man. Uh, but no, it's. I'm also, by the way, glad that this has been made. There's not like another show like this on TV right now with this tone right. and that it's action and dystopian action, whatever. It's not like oh, it's yet another of these. So it's got going, that going for it. If nothing else, they made something. The original. I know it's based on an IP, but it's not like there's several shows on TV that are this. Oh yeah, like car I'm combat glad it's bloody. comedies. Yeah, yeah. Um, and this is on Peacock. Yeah, this could be is that the next right? big thing? Yeah, it's on yeah. Peacock. Which is weird. Weird place for it. Yeah, don't know that's where I would have gone, but yeah, I still like that's my my main frustration is like. Like I I love twisted metal. If someone was like make a twisted metal thing, I'd be like absolutely. And here's what we're gonna do, and I I would be so on board. And like I'm I'm definitely gonna love watching this, but I just don't think the Deadpool Zombie Land tone. I can see why they did that. It's the Zombie Land people, right? I think specifically, yeah, because Zombie Land is an apocalypse comedy. So they're like, oh, okay, you can do apocalypse comedy. Um, but I just don't think I think it would have been better to go John Carpenter with this. They're, uh, they're the same people, to be clear. The Deadpool people and the Zombieland people are the same people. Right. Yes. Um, and so like looking at it like it just it's weird to judge it this way as an adaptation of a dumb video game. But I'm like, I just I wish it was a little like like less bright, a little grittier, a, honestly, a little gorier and a little more like oh, a I'd... little more just cheesy. <laughs> um in a in a very like you know like again in a way where it's still fun and funny but i just want them to play it up a little more yeah i don't like, i, I did dis- the game i disagree with the brightness i love how colorful it is I don't, yeah i mean i, don't, I like i, I like things I being colorful in i don't a world need another things I, aren't colorful i don't need another uh uh show or movie that that looks like desaturated ass but so. I, I guess I don't want it desaturated. I I want it more like again gritty and darker. A little more like like, like Carpenter, again, yeah. Uh, Carpenter, yeah. Carpenter isn't desaturated, but it's no. He just darker. uses lighting, you know, like yeah. a like an artist. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like I don't know. There's just something I <laughs> I I feel like there's another version of this that we could have done that yeah. would have been a and better use of from this, this brief sure. trailer. We may not have the whole picture of what. Of what tone they yeah, go for. for sure. tone, trailers can be very misleading when it comes to tone sometimes and rhythm and all of that. So, um, yeah, I hope people. Yeah, get this a could chance. be really dark. Yeah, this, like at least tonally, you know, this could have some really dark shit. I don't know. I'm definitely going to give it a shot. Um, let's talk about Corner Office. Oh, this man. is uh, John Hamm playing fucking this. 
is probably the most interesting trailer on the dock, I think. Yeah. And this is an example of when people talk about movies that are all like it's all been swallowed up by Marvel and Star Wars and all that. And it's not true at all. There, there's there's still lots of like this is a got to be a very low budget production, right? Like probably mm-hmm. some ten million dollars, whatever. I'm guessing John Hammond's not taking a ton of money for this, but it is a weird surrealist. Like it is from the point where the the trailer does not make it clear what's happening. It's all mystery. It's all style. It's just oozing with style and. It's weird and Kafka esque, and I love that this is still being made. It will not make a dime in this. No, in this media no, environment, no, no, no. it will it will get dumped to a streaming service after maybe playing in. Well, no, it will not play in festivals because they will not be doing that because the actors cannot go there and do the promotion stuff. That's the whole point of the film That's festivals: correct, yeah. is the stars showing there. So you. Uh... Um, Real quick, you had mentioned Napoleon coming out for awards, the the Oscars. Like they, they can't do the Oscars if actors are still on strike either, right? That's correct. Oh, yeah. They can't do any stuff. They can't do podcasts. They can't do like any kind of publicity, any of that. So, um, so I don't know what the fate of this will be, but I, I assume that one day I will be looking at Amazon Prime or one of the streamers, and it will just show up deep in a menu. And I'll be like, oh, it's that John Hamm movie that we talked about on. Uh, Hypecast six months ago and I yeah. will watch it and I will notice that on Amazon it has 137 reviews and it has three and a half stars um, <laughs> but uh, this stuff is being made and, and a lot of reason it can be made is a lot of you can make stuff look really good on a really really low budget these days right yes. like to, to yeah, fake that a... is very true it's a it's a great time for indie filmmaking weirdly enough um, it's just that like financially it's just not because the, there's no dvd yeah, exactly. market where you could really recoup you could know that you're recouping your investment whereas here this almost has to be a thing where nobody involved got paid their normal rate like there's no way yeah but i, I um, love if, what john ham is doing with his career because he's he had a lot of paths he could have taken he got offered batman at one point and uh turned it down because he's like they the way these superhero deals work is you sign up for seven movies like whether or not they're going to make seven movies it's like if we make seven movies you are agreeing to be in all of them and it's like this is it you're now you're now batman from now on he's like i just didn't i just didn't want that and you look at how much weird stuff he turns up in he's just having fun he's taking his Mad Men money and he's he's having fun I was going to say, we, we talked about this with a lot of TV actors have this ability where if they were in a hit TV show, that could probably sustain them for a very long time that they can gen. Like, I feel like that's why so many TV actors were like, what happened to them? And it's like, they didn't need to do much else if they didn't yeah. want to. Uh, they could just pick and choose. And John Hamm is 100% doing that. We should explain what this is about, at least yes. in the trailer. It's about a... It's, it's a it's a real office space type situation where it's this guy that's working in the shitty office that seems a little off. Um, and he finds this corner office, this secret room that like gives you like divine inspiration of some sort or the ability to do anything. And like people are telling him you're delusional, but then it seems like some people know about it. It's very, it is, it, I, in my opinion, it is extremely 1999 and not in a bad way because 1999 is when we got, fight club it's when we got um american beauty it's when we got um (laughs) fucking being john malkovich it's that exact like office job plus like surrealist cinema um where like is a current show that also does this vibe yeah on uh and those shows were tv yeah they they were a little naive obviously i mean american beauty is a hard watch (laughs) um yeah but but you know what i mean where they're like uh having a stable job that sucks am i right but like you you get the vibe in the good way which is like it's when like it's weird how 1999 was a year where we're like let's just do weird shit um and so it's got that vibe to me where it's very much like, OK, this is the guy in his office job who gets thrown into like what seems like a magical world of some sort that's shot in a very capable and in interesting way. Uh, so I don't know. It's also got um, what's his name in it um, uh, from fucking uh, Community. I, I don't nobody Danny nope. Danny, Danny, um, Danny oh Danny Pudi yeah that's right yeah. Danny Pudi I forgot I forgot he Jesus, was in the trailer I was blanking in my head. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, which is just nice to see him in something. Yeah. Who no. also is probably just really rich uh, after doing like, or well off. I don't, I don't know about that. Yeah. Not rich, but you know, eight <laughs> seasons of a popular show. He's that's probably true. Doing okay. Yeah, that's true. Um, it did get canceled twice. That's true. <laughs> Yeah, these people aren't like yeah. For the record, they aren't. Oh, like he's also he's doing on um, amazingly, but they probably have a nice head start. And in, he, you know? he's he's on Mythic Quest too, which is a pretty good show oh, yeah. if you've not watched it. Um, this director I've never heard of. Um, they they haven't done anything. I've uh, something called the New Tenants, a short film. So like I don't know. That's interesting. This uh, very fucking curious about this though. Um, it has that vibe of somebody who came from the world of internet shorts or something like that and this is their like they were uh, somehow got connected to john ham and, and somehow were able to get this project together and to make their weird yeah. make their weird thing which is again still happens it's just that we there was a time in hollywood when something like that could bubble up and become a hit because it would get some run in theaters and become a cult hit and maybe you know that actually become a, a big the big thing here, like the the total amount of money this movie can make under any possible circumstances is very small. There, there's like not a pathway for something like this to blow up in the same way that there's no pathway for a text internet column that you wrote to blow up the way they yeah. could in 2012. That, that doesn't happen anymore. There's no such thing as a viral internet article anymore. And the idea of like an indie movie like this kind of like wow that came out of nowhere and made huge money like how would it it's not going to get it's not going to be allowed to play in a ton of theaters if it gets screens it's going to screen in a few in a few cities and then it'll go right to streaming and then it will just exist like somewhere but again they don't make these numbers public so somewhere deep in amazon's databases they may have like wow we got decent watch time out of this corner office thing yep. and you'll never hear I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like weird. You need, yeah, it's like you. They need the. Um, these movies only exist because people like John Hamm are like open to it. They're like, give yeah. me this stuff, um, and then like I was just thinking about because I was thinking about Christian Bale, who's similar, and he did this movie, The Pale Blue Eye, that looked really compelling and creepy. That I just realized that's been on. Netflix, Netflix for yeah, a while just now. For months it now, just, yeah. Th- it just passed me the fuck by because no one told me it was out, and it's that's so frustrating because that movie looks really good. I'm like, well, for a week, and then it just yeah drops away. It just drops off. It's like fuck's sake, yeah. Uh, like it's like I'm begging, I'm begging these people to like give me these things and make sure I know they're there. Yeah, it's I don't know. it's yeah. So these movie weird small movies like this are still being made it's just there's a it, you're, to you're pretty much guaranteeing yourself a financial loss when you make them yeah and uh, here's another one uh uh our next oh, trailer man. jules this, with this fucking also looks ben great kingsley doing a thing doing he's a doing a whole band. thing yeah he's just playing a confused old man um who is uh just at a town at a town hall meeting making his standard complaints about like the kids mess with his crap or whatever and standard old guy yelling at cloud stuff and then he just mentions oh and a ufo crashed into my uh, yard and crushed my flowers yeah and it's all these uh, like delightful uh like small town people and this little dildo alien that they yep. called jules and, that, yep. and that's it and like they're gonna i don't know learn something about jules is gonna be very you sweet know, wes anderson gonna... almost kind of vibe yeah, or yeah, something yeah. where it's all very very cutesy and uh you know and it's, it's all under very understated and then there's it, the plot looks just like shot for shot et where the government discovers a thing but then everyone befriends the alien and then they've got to get the alien away from the government and back to its ship and uh and maybe there's like a twist that's not this is one of those trailers i feel like it almost takes you through all three acts of the film it looks yeah, like it does like, yeah but it's what i feel like they've develop this system where they're like listen people aren't going to see it otherwise like i feel like they they were like scared people wouldn't see it if they didn't tell us the whole damn movie but i don't know could be wrong it could it could turn out that there's a third act twist where the alien turns out to be like a sex predator or something and they just yeah. didn't reveal any of that in the trailer the alien in a lot of the shots is uh shirt cocking it um where he's he is. Nude he is. aside from a t-shirt which is a like it'd be better just not have him wear anything for some reason i find it unsettling 
Uh, mainly oh, yeah. if you ran, ran into a man who was doing that, you would almost, again, feel more uncomfortable than if he was just nude. Yes. It, 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 you don't want to be around this alien. Like, it feels like I wouldn't want to be in the room with the alien. It just... It, it, it doesn't say anything. It just kind of looks at you. Yeah, because it's also like... We see it naked at first, and it doesn't have any genitals, but then the shirt implies that there's some sort of genitals that I wasn't aware of. Yes. And then, like, just the shirt, like, now I'm wondering about its nipples. Are its nipples upsetting in a way that they had to cover it up? It, it It's it's sort of like when you, like... They're tiny, like when, tiny versions of his face. Yeah, Hannah just talks about this faces. a lot. It's when you post a picture of, like, a dog and you blur out the genitals, and it's like, well, you're making it sexual now. Like, I wasn't thinking about the genitals, but now you're making me think about them. Cover of that Nirvana album with the baby whose yeah. penis is visible. And then in some countries, they like put, they censored its penis. And it's like, well, it wasn't weird until you did that. Yeah, exactly. Until you put like a red sticker over it. It's like, I never, I own that album, you know, for 30 years and never noticed you could see the baby's dong until you put like a big red no, yeah. don't don't look at the baby's <laughs> the baby's dick. It's like, why well, I, I wasn't. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it didn't occur to me till you put a sticker over it, and now you you're the one who made it weird. Yeah, and this is definitely like I do. I definitely feel uncomfortable around this alien. Yeah, he's uh, throwing out some vibes. Yeah, um, maybe that's the joke. It, it's very much a oh yeah a, a mismatch right. between what's happening and the way people are reacting like like his his complaint about the ufo that landed in his yard that it like destroyed his flowers or whatever it's like that kind of thing so oh, the, yeah. the joke oh, yeah. may be that this alien just actually gives them nothing the whole time but they're like <laughs> they're treating him like he's he's a special wonderful that, that doesn't seem like it could be what it is it honestly and... kind of looks like that might be it in the trailer because he yeah. is a total blank slate <laughs> this like... movie gives me like it gives me 90s comedy vibes like i don't know if it, this isn't probably a 90s one but heart beeps which we watched recently the andy kaufman robot movie and or like heart and souls the i don't know why Robert they're both heart Jr., movies yeah. yeah where like you go back and you watch them and you're like when did this get made <laughs> like who wait when did this happen where like this feels like one that 20 years from now people look back and i'd like this a fascinating artifact where it's probably a very fun movie that's just going to pass everybody by. And then it's going to be like, wait, Ben Kingsley did this. When did he do this? Who let him do this? Uh, and so like, I don't know, just that alone makes me excited. So this yeah. is going to be in select theaters next month. And then it's, does it say what streaming service it's going to land on? Oh, uh, probably it Amazon. For, okay. I, I thought one of these was like a was like a an Apple TV thing that I could be oh, okay. confused. Maybe uh, not. Maybe this. No, this one just says it's coming out in August. Okay. Okay. Yeah, August eleventh. Oh, um, it's the Napoleon so movie cool. had it the channel was Apple TV. That's not going directly to Apple, right? That's a that's a No, movie, it's not it? okay. an Apple. What else film. did we cover? We covered something last week that was the same where it's like, it feels weird to have an Apple TV logo. Oh, the Scorsese one. Where oh, yeah, it's like Apple TV one. presents and it's like, God, well, I, I, I like, the letters I get, TV like nothing... on there. Like that's the yeah. thing. It's not Apple entertainment or Apple media. It's like you've, you put the word TV, which isn't such an outdated mm -hmm. terminology. Yeah. Now. It's sort of like, like I'm not ready to accept that yet. You know, where it's like there's MGM logos and these like other logos where you think like, okay, that's cinema. Apple TV, I haven't made that connection yet, so it's weird. Uh, but, you know, I don't know, good for them. Sure. Uh, we got one last trailer here, folks. <laughs> we got The Nun 2. Oh, man. Which w was always going to happen. The Nun 1, despite the, being the nun a very two, bad movie. The Nun 2, Nun Your Business. Yeah, okay. I we can be had, done now. We can had <laughs> no idea there was a movie called The Nun. It's One based off of the oh, Conjuring man. cinematic universe. And effect, Jason. <laughs> you had convinced me that this was just like a goofy thing they did, where they just skipped right to the second movie and never, <laughs> and never made a first one. They're like, no, we're going right to the Nun too. <laughs> we're just gonna. We're going to refer to a bunch uh, of stuff that never happened. As, uh, hold on to your dicks. We're going like, right to the nun too. She's, she has returned. It's like, did I see the, the, the first the time? The nun 
if you saw The Conjuring 2, the nun is in that. And is, in fact, the main villain of that one, despite that not being called The Nun. And then because there was this weird Conjuring cinematic universe, right, with Annabelle, and they really wanted it to work, they made The Nun, which is uh, one of the worst horror movies of recent um yeah, it, but it, uh, it made so much goddamn money, Dave. It made a lot of money because it's 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 basic, right? It's it's as simple as it gets. It's like There's it's a, it's like more basic than basic. It is terrible. Literally it's terrible. nothing, nothing in Hollywood that prints money like these movies. Not Marvel. Yes. Because Marvel you're spending three hundred million bucks to get right. back to, to get back whatever, five hundred. These things they spend... you can crap these things out for fifteen million bucks and make 300 exactly. like you can make the budget yeah. back 20 30 times over and the last last weekend the Insi- the new insidious movie is a 15 million dollar movie that made like 38 million it's th- wild because they're all kind of the same um but they're i'm trying to think what they're equivalent to because it's not like audiences are dumb people go to these movies and they know what they're getting uh it, it's i'm trying to think of something like where it's just like it's like <sighs> I don't know. It's like watching like episodes of American Gladiators or something where you're like, they're all kind of the same, but I'm having fun. Uh, I, I I feel like there's a better comparison, but like the first nun movie, like it is, I, I don't, I, the, that, that thing fucking like roars. It's like more of an action. Like they physically fight the nun. There's a sequence where someone gets, goes out to a graveyard and gets like jump scared. And then they do the same thing two more times to do different characters. Yeah. Cause they know to, they don't even have to like try to think up new ways. Like literally a character gets up, goes to the graveyard, gets jump scared. It cuts to another character who gets up, hears a noise, goes outside, goes to the graveyard, gets jump scared. Then they cut to a third person who hears a noise, goes out and it, they just keep, it's like, it's like jingling keys. Like, it's like, what are we doing here? And the director of this new nun movie also did The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It, which is also gibberish. And the the La Llorona movie, not the good one, The Curse Of, the curse which was of another Llorona, one, yeah. where it's like, yeah, they just churn these out. Um, it's wild, but like you can't, like, <laughs> what else are they going to do? <laughs> They're making so much money. It's it's so weird to me this system. Yeah. But I like to think that this is how we get other better horror movies. It is. At 100%. Yeah. It's it sort of a, has always been this way, right? Like horror Yeah. Tradi- no, it hasn't never. Right. Yeah. Like traditionally horror has been a low investment high yield genre, right? You can spend if right. you, you know, if if you if certain things align correctly, but like traditionally you can spend very little on a horror movie and they, they, they right. make a lot you of money. You knock out a bunch of Jason movies and then you can make like a good horror movie that yeah. you care about. But I guess what it is to me that I, I feel my, I guess my age with, with is what I don't understand is why aren't these fun? The Jason movies, even like the bad 2000, like scream clone slashers, those were all like fun in stupid ways. These movies are so boring most of the time. Uh, the, so, like, the idea that they're churning them out, it's like, at least make them campy, right? Like, at least make it silly. And I guess The Nun was a little bit, but I, it was mm, mostly just people yeah. talking. Yeah, I can't even, I can't even call The Nun, like, because The Nun is just bad. The, just, the <laughs> ending is fun because it's stupid. The Nun literally <laughs> drowns a woman. It's like, oh, yeah, the, like, The Nun is literally crouched drowning a woman and it's like you know how scary it is to be drowned by a nun <laughs> tapping into that deep fear of being drowned by a nun with fangs i just like that it's beating her up like a fucking a uh, mob enforcer yeah <laughs> like <laughs> of all the like as crazy supernatural spooky as the nun is she's just like drowning you in a toilet <laughs> yeah like, yeah and uh, like, it's, like tony make the whole soprano film like that. make the whole film like that make the nun just walk around stabbing yeah, just people hitting you with a ha- just breaking yeah. your knuckles with a hammer yeah but that's what always gets me with these movies is it's not that like i get stupid horror i love stupid horror yeah this stuff it's not stupid enough it's not fun but uh yeah. i don't know well uh, well i do know about the nun i have zero interest in the nun and i hope we don't have to watch this we may i don't know the the devil made me do it was also terrible boy that was bad that movie was gibberish that that was kind of hilariously bad though so at least that was like a fun romp yeah 
but uh, La, the curse of La Yorona was uh, terrible. So yeah, this trailer, my God, it, even this trailer, you can tell. So in the conjuring two, there's a scene where he's in front of a fucking painting of the nun. For some reason, his wife makes a scary painting of the nun and they do a she, sequence she where she keeps seeing it. Yeah. Yeah. But she should know better. But, um, he's in the room or she's in the room or I think he makes the nun painting. It doesn't matter. And she's like turning on and off the lights because the nun's eyes are glowing. And then sure enough, the nun like starts running at her from behind the painting. And it's very funny. Um, and they just, <laughs> That's right, I forgot that. about that. It's very funny. I, I, in my mind, I remember being scary and I watched it recently. I was like, Oh, that's the, hilarious. The buildup is, is scary, but like what actually, yeah. what actually happens is fucking funny. <laughs> it's just, and they she do comes running again. out from behind the painting. <laughs> They do that again in this trailer where it's the <laughs> magazines and then they form like a nun picture. And all I could think is, so is the nun just going to like come out from the magazine? No, not even that. They just like the lights go dim and then come back on and she's there. She's and there, it's like, yeah. you really couldn't have thought of anything else. My goodness. Like, I don't know. Mm. the nun. <laughs> Great movie. The nun. You and, you and nun. Yeah. All right. Let's Any move other on. thoughts on the nun? Okay. We can thank some more producers then. Sure. Um, big thank you to Deborah is awesome. Barbara is great and cancer can go to hell. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you to Dracula, the bus driving vampire. Thank you. Thank you to Driftless, a.k.a. Goochcock. Real thank name, you. real person's name. Thank <laughs> you to E.T., the extravagant terrestrial. Thank you so much. Thank you to Evil Ed 209. Thank you. Thank you to Exploding Runes. Thank you. Thank you to Funky J Mostly comes out at night. Mostly. Thank you. Thank you to Heathcliff's Helping Handfuls. Thank you so much. Thank you to impossibleworlds.net. Read issue two and keep sci-fi alive. Thank you. Thank you to James Cameron's Prolapse Locomotive. Thank choo, you. Choo, choo. All right, let me jump in here. Thank you to Chris Shanovich. Thank you. Thank you to Look Mom on a podcast. Thank you. Thank you to Mabel Step on Me. Step on Me. Thank you. Beautiful. <laughs> Thank you to Mackenzie Fuck Shuffling with Home to Foes Confusing the Large Stick Chill. Thank you. Thank you to Mercurial Oz. Thank you. Thank you to Mike the Lurker. Thank you. Thank you to Mr. Tell Your Wife how many Patreon subscriptions you have before you agree to buy a house. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you to musical guest Rob Ritchie. Thank you. Thank you to No One Can Hear You Scream and Space McNulty. Thank you. And thank you to Norm from Cheers. Thank you. Uh, news stories. You guys want to talk about what's in the news besides, besides the, uh, the, the strike? Big strike, I guess? Um, Deadpool 3 had some news. Uh, specifically, we got... Uh, we got yellow suit Wolverine coming back and they're doing what I kind of hope they would be doing because, and I also hope we'll end the multiverse stuff is it seems like they're going to bring back like every, they're bringing back like Electra, um, the, the, the Electra from Jennifer, Jennifer, Gar Garner, Jennifer Garner. Yeah. I'm guessing they're going to bring out some fantastic four people. They're, they're reaching back into old Marvel that never, you know, never made it. And they're going to stick that in here and they're probably going to, you know, dick around with the multiverse. And honestly, I think out of all the things, this might be one of the more fun versions. If the strike didn't completely uh, fuck up this one. <laughs> uh, what do you guys think of this? Sure. I mean, I <laughs> like I've, I've said in my defense of the of the Venom movies, I love having like 90s trash comics also be having their own movies and just to yeah. have them be just as trashy as the comics they're based upon. So I, I like the idea of Deadpool being the movie where we do the multiverse thing with all of the movies that nobody liked. Right. Like, or that, yeah. were, or that were panned as being absolute trash. Like that's where you so, want to, that's where you would do it. Right. To me, that's the end game where multiverse to me is like, it's like, okay, we're done we've run the course we we trained it remarkably fast right like leave it to uh superhero films to take a trope and just fucking pummel it beat it beat that dead horse into the ground the flash i think was the version where everybody was like okay officially sick of this i think this will be the last or i i want this to be where it's like okay we're getting it all out we're done you know like you can't do anything else after this hopefully they can stick Darth Vader. They could have Wolverine fight, fight Darth Vader, I guess. Yeah, let's do that. Why not? Who gives a shit? Yeah. yeah. But this feels like the most nihilistic version. 
And that's really all we want anyway. And so yeah, my feeling is like, yeah, fuck it. If there was yeah, ever them, anything get to them do, all in there. pull three. <laughs> get them all in there. Yeah. Yeah. Get Colin Farrell's bullseye in there. They, if they get Colin Farrell's bullseye, that would be a delight. <laughs> I would be very curious to see which actors are willing to do that to like, yeah, the, the, to kind of poke fun at the the one role that like robbed them of their chance to be a bigger star or whatever. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it, I mean, this is, if this is going to be the movie for people that are sick of superhero movies that can do really, really well, I don't, even as a joke, I don't like the idea of bringing back Wolverine after the big emotional send off in Logan. I didn't like it when they announced it. I think it totally defeats the purpose of having a movie like that, but I get it. It's a business I get it. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. You're not going to recast gonna... the role because it's not going to be the same. Right. It was always going to end this way. That's, I've been, you know, we've been saying for so long the problem with this whole model was that they didn't, they refused to actually have it end. So, like, we're now getting news that Disney is dialing back even more on superhero stuff, it sounds like. At least uh, of the because, shows, probably. Yeah, because they're not making money. And it's no. like, that that was always it. You know, like, that's part of the problem with studios making these creative decisions, which is like, you know, it's the same with that new Indiana Jones. It's like, everything's going to go out with a whimper because they're just going to keep making them until people just stop noticing where they're like, oh, I guess there was another Marvel TV show, you know? Yeah. Um, and so, like, I, I wasn't a big fan of Logan, but I agree where it's like, that was their attempt to actually be like, okay, done. It's all done. We're finishing a character. Yeah. And they're like, but wait, there's more. And it's like, of course there's more. There's always fucking more. They can't not have more. And they won't. The last the last time Wolverine I like will show up in something, it'll be like how we brought back Professor X in Multiverse, where it's like, really? That's going to be the last time we see him. He gets his brain exploded in one scene. <laughs> All right. Like it, it, that's what it feels like to me is like, it's, it's just going to be these like they, this weird cameo they, that we'll forget and be like, I guess that's the last time we see that person. They really didn't think hard about that. <laughs> no. I, mean, I, I love that. I love that. They let Sam Raimi do that in his weird, yeah fascinatingly terrible marvel movie that i love even though it's a big piece of shit but like the fact that yeah like the last time we'll see patrick stewart as professor x is him gliding out on the hover chair with the the cartoon x-men theme song playing and then he gets his fucking brain exploded yeah it's the realization <laughs> these people they don't have reverence that the fans do no. they just don't we were talking about it's just a product to them there that's the yeah. there's no creativity there and they're all becoming Mickey Mouse and like, yeah. you know, that's what you have to accept about this stuff, I guess. But it makes me very, again, with this Deadpool where I'm like, fuck it, bring them all out. Have Darth Vader yeah. up there. Because it's like, it makes you so nihilist where it's like, you know, Indiana Jones was one of the last characters that I was like, I really care about that character. And now I'm like, whatever, fuck it. You know, <laughs> have them ride a T-Rex, I guess, because nothing matters. Yeah. Uh, and so like it's all just Mickey you have Mouse. To, like, yeah and so this feels no different where it's like all right drive it into the ground it is interesting ride it, ride it to oblivion it is interesting that they, that disney 10 years ago spent billions of dollars to acquire star wars and marvel and 10 years later you know obviously they've made tons and tons of money but it is like they can't make star wars movies anymore yeah, and now, and now, and now they've hit a point where like, well, we got to scale back Marvel too. Like they, they're driving these things into the ground. Yeah, they really Just are. In, 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 ter it's... in terms of obviously not in terms of revenue, especially with Marvel still like the people are still chasing Marvel, but like in terms of creativity and how special they feel, and you know just how it's they're just yeah yeah anyway yeah. I mean, this is what happens, right? Unlimited growth, have the studios make the decisions, yeah. the people looking for money. Like, it's just, there's no creative decisions being made with this stuff. So, just, yeah. again, that's why Deadpool to me, I'm like, well, at least Deadpool is having fun with yeah, that. At least it's having you know? fun. Yeah. Bring go bring Nick Cage's Ghost Rider in there. Yeah. No, I would be so for that. I dare you. <laughs>
<laughs> I think that's why people had trouble with Flash because Flash kind of. Uh, Jason, did you see Flash at all? No. No, yeah. I, I saw viral clips that went around on Twitter. People oh, yeah. Th- talking about how awful it was and the multiverse stuff and it just seemed like the worst possible execution of it where you you didn't even bring the actor in for a day you just went to some old clips and then wrapped their face around a cgi figure and it's like it's like whoa look it's nicholas cage it's like well no he didn't show up for this you, you're right you paid it's him like, a they check asked his to, permission yeah <laughs> yeah to wrap his face around a a, a playstation 2 cut scene and i I don't know. It's like yep. every time a Spider-Man movie does that thing where it's like multiple Spider-Man all point at each other. See, it's just like the meme. And like, man, you are you are assuming a lot of goodwill on my part that I do not feel. Right. <laughs> and you yeah, the, fact, like, the fact that they've done that three times now. Yeah. yeah it's like, yeah, <laughs> we three different it. movies. Are like, we got it's just it. Like the meme. I, OK, yeah. but uh, like at least they like for those they have the actor because that's what it is with flash and going back to the sag thing of like the ai likeness where it's like they need to think about why it didn't work in flash and part of the reason why is like i don't need to, you you're holding up a picture of christopher reeve and expecting me to clap and it's like it's not like yeah i know christopher reeve existed like i i i can you can just show a clip like it's just it's yeah and, and they I think they couldn't figure out if they were doing it in a fun way or in a reverence way because they did the Nicolas Cage Superman, which is funny, but then they'd put it with the like Christopher Reeve one and the music was like, you know, like, Oh, this is serious. And so like, again, it's like, all right, if you're going to do this shit, you might as well just like, like it, it's worse if they treat it with reverence, in my opinion, where they're like, look at what we did. <laughs> it's like, you didn't do anything. Well, no, um, the, the, the interdimensional rift has caused Christopher Reeve's Superman to get diarrhea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> John Williams' score kicks in. <laughs> uh, oh, now, he's, uh, now he's jerking off for some reason. Why? Why, Superman? <laughs> he's totally abused whatever. We believed in you. Whatever fine print they got his estate to sign off on. And they just. Oh, man. <laughs> That would be amazing. Um, the um, stop eating those babies, Superman. Just uh, chewing his way through a daycare away. center. Yeah, da, 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 da. <laughs> yeah fuck it. Yep. Um, you know, like the Meg so, just opening his jaw up wide and all yeah, sorts of Jason babies. Statham fucking yeah, have Jason Statham fight fight Superman. <laughs> Gives a shit. Statham um, v Superman. Yeah. Oh man, I'd watch the fuck out of that. Yeah, hell yeah. Yeah. Um, so we got this Barbie Oppenheimer double feature thing that people have been talking about. Yeah. I just think it's funny because like we love the memes. We love memes, folks. But like there isn't an intersecting audience for this, right? Like it's funny that they were framing it as like a competing thing. And it's like, I don't think they're competing. Probably um, not. And Christopher Nolan, there's, they, there's they tried be, to make him um, out to obvious. be mad about it, but his interviews are like, I think it's great. You know, movies are back. And it's like, it's just, yeah. The movies are back. It's just, it's just a meme. Yeah, uh, it's, it's just, and, it's just a they, meme. They asked Tom Cruise about it. And my favorite celebrity interactions, I don't know if, if other people are aware of this. If anyone on a red carpet or in an interview asks Tom Cruise about a movie that's not his own, like a movie that he's going to go see or has seen, it's clear he does not watch movies, <laughs> which yeah. I understand. He probably is working nonstop. Like, he, you know, I don't read that many books. Like, it's just I don't have time. Um, right. But he will never just say, obviously, he cannot say, well, I don't go see other people's movies because that make you, makes you sound like a dick. So he just starts talking and starts riffing. <laughs> and so there's a great interview transcript from like five years ago where they asked him like, well, what was your seminal movie moment? Like what was the the movie that, that made you fall in love with cinema? And he gave like this 800 word answer. It's like, well, you know, film, I can't name just one because really my whole life has just been film and just the fantasy of the way film sweeps you up and, and, and it's, it's like a, ch- a an elementary school child trying to fake his way through an essay. And he, he <laughs> always, it's the way some of us will panic if we're at a new job and they ask you like, well, what are your right. hobbies? 
that's and you can't in that moment you can't think of a single hobby even if they ask you your, yeah. your favorite food like i can't think of a food tom cruise is like that if you ask him so anyway they asked him if if well which movie are you going to see first oppenheimer or barbie and he just gave one of his long rambling answers about well you know the magic of cinema you've got to see both of them in the theater with the popcorn he's like an ai it's and then everybody's funny. just like you heard the man i guess <laughs> that's what we're gonna do <laughs> yeah he's a company guy like that's well, his whole thing right where he's, he's just like movies i support him you ask me about a movie i say that's a good movie I like that's it that's that's what he does um also his image is so carefully curated like what's tom cruise's favorite sports team right or right who knows like his his it, it's like he's got a he's zillion a handlers human. they auditioned wives for him like that's yeah he's not a human he's not he's allowed a, he's to a, yeah. he doesn't express opinions about other people's work because he has to be as neutral as possible right he has a twitter account that's clearly just run by a pr person but it's in his right. voice and it's always just like who's excited to go to the theater this weekend to and, the movies and yeah just, and <laughs> it would be some, amazing eat some popcorn an actual tom cruise twitter that he like actually updated at three in the morning while drunk or, or whatever <laughs> would be spectacular where he's just sitting there watching bake off or something it's like I, I I would be, I would have no problems. I mean, we've talked about this before. I have no trouble believing that Tom Cruise has no idea how to use the internet. No. I, I, oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's living the dream. It. In other words, <laughs> yeah. he has what we can only wish. Can you imagine being wealthy enough and secure enough that you don't have to be on there ever? Ever. You could just live your life and just not it's yeah. just all noise. Like you've got a PR person like, well, you know, there's some there's some gifs of that Oprah appearance that are and like they have to explain to you what that is. Man. Right. It's <laughs> entirely possible. He might not even understand that the internet isn't like the it same exists. thing as television. <laughs> yeah, like he might not know what the internet is. How he great would it be it though yet. if he just hated on one movie? Like just like the Mamma Mia series or something. Like there was just like one movie that yeah. he drew the line at. One he movie loved that all Tom movies. Cruise couldn't fucking yeah, stand. Yeah, and he's just like fuck that movie though. That's yeah, my or, the one it, thing we know about him. If it was like and Oppenheimer, it's... if he just started trashing <laughs> it, like well, I I made it about about forty five minutes before I walked out of this dog turd. <laughs> be couldn't amazing. hear the dialogue. The, the man really? does not understand sound mixing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah bobby yeah. oppenheimer sure sure why not no i just had the idea of tom cruise really hating some like innocuous british drama like wilhelmina yeah, people in are like what the <laughs> fuck did we do they get like a bunch of maniacs like <laughs> just like harassing them because tom cruise hates like the him. one movie he hates <laughs> memes of him like urinating on the on that movie's <laughs> logo <laughs> just yeah I hate Notting Hill. All, all of his, all of his like curated me like tweets, and then those memes for some reason. Oh. <laughs> um. All right. Should we think some more producers? Sure. Uh, by the way, we'll probably cover Barbie and Oppenheimer. I'm sure. Um, probably. I think Oppenheimer first, just because. Let me tell you, I already got tickets for it because I, I, I. That's oh, that's the other thing I just want to say, which is really funny, is I'm seeing it at the Chinese theater in IMAX because I'm like I gotta see Oppenheimer in IMAX, but like it's a it's like a biopic drama, like it's very funny to me that Christopher Nolan is tricking everybody into seeing his like war thriller drama, like it's like it's the next Marvel thing, right? Because he's just like see it in IMAX, it's the event of the summer. I think it's gonna be like scenes of hearings and like people in rooms talking about science right i mean there's like, going to be a few detonations but otherwise oh, yeah yes oh yeah there will be for sure but like it's mostly going to be people talking there's not going right. to be a car chase i can tell you that the trailer and the stuff they've released makes it sound like it's going to be a lot of post-war like you know he's uh, I assume most people know he was accused of being a communist later and it was it was a whole thing. If they cover the actual Manhattan Project and the process of that whole pro that whole process was nuts. It was 
No, I'm not just talking about the detonations. I'm talking about all the experimentation right. along the way, all the things they had to do and the ancillary stuff. And it was crazy because they did not know what they were doing and they were working on a deadline. They thought they were beating the Nazis to the bomb. But the type of experiments they did and some of the ones that went horribly wrong and unlocked these demonic forces that just melt people from the inside – because these people not seeing radiation sickness before and what happens to a human body when it's exposed to a gigantic amount of radiation, there is crazy, crazy things to be covered in this movie that, that are visual and horrifying. But if you're not making it a horror movie, yeah, there may be a lot of there may be a lot of hearings and, and that kind of thing, a lot of meetings. Yeah. But. <laughs> I'm sure it's a compelling film, but yeah. Yeah, it's wild that they were just jazzing with making a nuclear bomb. Like it's 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 freaky to think about. And I'm sure they'll show multiple like tests, but yeah, it does still feel like it's like just a just a biopic, uh, but like extreme extreme biopic. And I I hope people are prepared for that. Prepared for like you know two and a half hours of the three hours to be like just people smoking cigarettes in a room and talking, and apparently full frontal nudity. Yeah, so full, that's yeah, cool. full full Sweet. penetration sex. God, also yeah. apparently so einstein full frontal of einstein um all right <laughs> <laughs> let's thank some producers yeah let's do uh, it just thinking about right. einstein's hog oh yeah you know the the hair is gonna look the same down there uh, right? yeah, it's exactly. gonna be that yeah of course sticking out its tongue why even do it otherwise that's gonna be an oppenheimer yeah <laughs> uh <laughs> all right Big old thank you to Pete for Pagel. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you to Numenol Ultra Microscopic Silicon Volcano Coniosis Anti Establishment Terrianism Jones. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you to pre order TikTok superstar Jason Pargin's new book, Zoe is Too Drunk for This Dystopia. Pre orders are super important. Thank you. Thank you to Rev MD. Thank you so much. Thank you to Ricky Cilantro. Thank you. Thank you to Rosemary's Baby from Eraserhead. Thank you. Thank you to Screaming Horse Pyramid. Thank you. Thank you to Sorry Cop, World's Most Laughable Centrist. Thank you. Thank you to Steven. Thank you. Thank you to the conveniently placed self-destruct button on the top of every baby's head. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you to the Midnight Patron with patrons at midnight. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. All right, let me swoop in here. Thank you to the Oatmeal Savage. Thank you. Thank you to the producer formerly known as the Ghost of Dave Thomas. Thank you. Thank you to the Tubi Terror Bunny demands you enter the ninja with Franco Nero. Okay. Sure. Thank you to these seven bees. Thank you. Thank you to Tiger George Pratt Thompson. Raindrops keep falling on my head. Thank you. Thank you to Tip Drizzle. Thank you. Thank you to Tux. Tux. Thank you to Vincent with a Vincent. Y. Thank you to Why Did You Take a Flying Fuck at the Moon. Thank you. Thank you to your mom. Thank you. And thank you to Zzz because Pie Guy liked being last. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Mm. Dave. Mm-hmm. We've had we've had a lot of we've 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 had a lot of laughs today, but I'm, I'm going to need to get cries. and some cries, some, few, some smiles and cries. Mm -hmm. uh, but I need to get serious with you for a minute. I need to know if you happen to have a movie that, amidst all of this all of this noise that we've just discussed, yep. if you happen to have a movie that deserves more hype, yes, the answer is yes. Mm. That movie, you're like the, the the J. Robert Oppenheimer of 2023, Dave. It's true. They're gonna, they're all gonna say that about me. Yeah, you're gonna, ch you're about to change the future. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, okay, so this is a movie <laughs> called Suitable Flesh. Uh, this is coming out probably this year on Shutter. We're not quite sure when. It's, it's. I think it's doing um, like festivals right now, but I know Shutter has got it. Um, Let's start with the fact that it's based off an HP Lovecraft uh, short called The Thing on the Doorstep. <laughs> um, it was adapted by Dennis pa Polly. How do you say his last name? Well, it doesn't matter. He, well, it kind of matters, but he's the, the writer of Reanimator and From Beyond. So you got that. Uh, Barbara Crampton also happens to be in this. Also Heather Graham. Um, it is being compared a lot to the work of Stuart Gordon, who is the director of reanimator and from beyond and also robot jocks um that said people the the people making those comparisons are saying that it is its own thing it's just that it's like it's of that time specifically a body horror that's also like erotic <laughs> which is a lot of Stuart gordon right like that was reanimator and from beyond 
So it's about a um, psychiatrist who becomes obsessed with a patient uh, with a personality disorder. And then uh, I guess that leads to the occult. And I'm guessing some sort of portals might open. You see in the trailer that we're going to see some gnarly ass stuff. Um, it's uh, the, one of the reviews says this may be the only horror film that invokes the Red Shoe Diaries and Cthulhu equally. So that's where we're at. Um, you know, sexy Lovecraft, Stuart Gordon. These are all if, if you know. You know who you are, once again, if you're <laughs> listening to this and this makes you excited. Suitable flesh. My goodness. What do you guys think of this? I mean, that's me. When you said you know who you are, that's that's yeah. me. Like, I love the Stuart Gordon Lovecraft movies. Um, I haven't seen Castle Freak yet. That's the only one I haven't seen. Um, yeah, I need to see that. Uh, but so, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited for this one. The story is really cool. Like, this is one of the freakier ones. Um, oh, good. And it's, you know, it's, it's, it's as, as best I can tell, it's like every Lovecraft thing. It is extremely loosely based on the story, but it's still the same basic premise of, of, of swapping bodies with people. Right. Um, and yeah, I'm into this. I like the cast. I like that we got Jonathan Sheck in there from mm -hmm. uh, That Thing You Do. Oh, yeah. And uh, a little, a little horror film called The Washingtonians. Nice. <laughs> About cannibal George Washington, if you ever saw it. No. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> This is also the director of Mayhem, which uh, uh, seems to have some following to it. People definitely, um, it has good reviews. Uh, I haven't seen Joe that Lynch. one. Yeah. Joe Lynch is his name. This also has a 94% on Rotten Tomatoes with um, 60, only 16 reviews. But that's to say that like, yeah, people are eating it up, right? It's a. Uh, yeah, it's, it, yeah, it looks, it looks pretty fun. It's got a great cast. Um, I like all of the elements here. Uh, yeah, I'm into this. Very much into this. Mm. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm excited for this one. The trailer. Why does the trailer look like that? Wait, why? Look like what? Let me see. It's just. You mean the weird it's, how thin it is? It, everything. Well, it, it's in a weird aspect ratio, but also it's like the graphics and stuff. The t the titles are are like the default text from the free video animating program you know what i'm saying <laughs> and like at the end it's like there's like a word art graphic the, the coming it, soon it, it's like the rest of it this is clearly a real movie but the trailer the way it's cut and everything it's like it reminds me of like a early 2000s horror movie trailer with the at least with the text you mean where it's like it is very generic i think that's honestly part of the schlock that they're pushing Okay. Because I, I, it's shot in a way where it's like you can kind of see it in the trailer where it's like that hazy lens, like look the soap opera esque look. I think is kind of what they're going for, which is like they're they know what they're making, right? They know what they're okay. trying to invoke, and that's a very like cheesy aesthetic. And so I'm guessing that's what they're doing with the trailer as well. The aspect ratio weirds me out because YouTube sometimes does that, where it like. I don't know. It, that's, a, that's a different conversation where it like sticks it up in the top and it feels like it's cut off, but it's not. Yeah, no, I, I see what Jason's saying about the graphics. I, 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 I feel like it's intentional because it does kind of feel like an old grindhouse horror trailer. Uh, it's just okay. these are the crappy graphics of 2023. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know. But, but yeah, I do see what you're saying is it looks like the movie itself looks like a real movie, but the trailer looks like it was edited on like I have a fan edit or yeah. something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I, I'm assuming it also hasn't gotten distribution or anything quite yet. I mean, it just like, I'm, I assume there'll be a shutter trailer. Like sometimes they'll do that. Right. Um, so it might get a different trailer at some point. Um, but we, like we don't quite know when it's going to come out. Uh, just that it probably pretty soon, um, because it is getting picked up for distribution. So, Sweet. yeah, suitable flesh. I'm into it. Yeah, it, it's again. You know who you are if you're into Stuart Gordon's work. Uh, this is definitely a love letter to that. So check it out. Jason, are you are you a fan of? Like Reanimator or From Beyond, or is that? I've seen Reanimator. I've not seen 
I don't think any of the other ones, and I'm not familiar with that filmmaker, but I guess I should be. Have you seen Space Truckers? No. Have you seen Robot Jocks? Yes. Okay. He made Robot he Jocks. He did Robot Jocks. <laughs> Well, but that's an example uh, of like a really ambitious idea done on a really low budget. Like it's oh for sure, you know the the stop motion or however they did the the robots. Like that's that's something that should have been like a two hundred million dollar idea. They they made it on uh, not that amount of money. Yeah, I kind of love robots. (laughs) Oh, I'm not criticizing it at all. I'm just saying that on paper. You see, I'm saying like on paper that that's something where they wouldn't make it because it's like well, you're talking about. Uh, you know. well, yeah, yeah. In this, in this scene, the, has... the Russian robot has a chainsaw penis. Obviously, we can't mm-hmm. film that for five million dollars. He's like, yes, <laughs> I can. Yeah, Stuart Gordon is—he's kind of <laughs> lower, lower budget Verhoeven a little bit. He has a Verhoeven to it where you're watching his movies, you're like, is he serious? Like Space Truckers is kind of like that too. Um, where he like I pull him with that, and like even John Carpenter, where it's like. Like Stuart Gordon should have made the Twisted Metals, <laughs> but uh, but mainly what we're talking about here is Reanimator from Beyond, where's that like Lovecraftian body horror, cosmic horror, plus being like weirdly erotic and kind of campy, and I think that's what this movie is going to tap into specifically. I don't think there'll be space truckers in this, although I would welcome that. <laughs> you should see space truckers. It has Dennis Hopper in it, so that's all you need to know. Yeah, uh, got to complete the the Dennis Hopper filmography for sure. But yeah, that's it. That's all I have to say about this movie. Sweet, looks good. Well, I think we've done it. I think that's a sewed. Woo! Woo! <laughs> we did it again, Dave. We always do it. This is what oh, we do. Yeah. It- oh man. <laughs> Jason, Jason, thank, thank you so you- much for being on the show. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you want to you wanna do a plug? One more plug right here at the end of all things. Yeah. Uh, my username is Jason K. Pargin on TikTok and also Twitter and also Threads and also Blue Sky and Instagram and YouTube and Facebook. Nice. Uh, there's some of them I'm sure I'm not on. I don't know how to use Snapchat. Yeah, uh, you don't need to know. Uh, I'm, there's, uh, there's several that I'm not on, but I... I'm trying very hard to keep up with where all the people have dispersed to it's as very the internet hard to continues tell. to splinter. But TikTok these days is the big one. I somehow have a quarter of a million followers on there and my videos have been viewed something like 230 million times. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> all right. Sweet. Um, yeah. We're not on threads yet. We're on Twitter gamefully on uh, well, we're going to find a home elsewhere as well at some point. Yeah. I'm like waiting for the dust to clear. Um, and then it's like, okay, a little bit. Yeah. There. Uh, but we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash gamefully unemployed. You go on there, you give uh, $5 a month. You get access to exclusive podcasts like Tom and Jeff watch Batman, Fox Mulder's maniac, Star Trek, the next feature. I'm on spiel boys. We watch movies every Friday night with our patrons as well. Uh, that will be the night this comes out. So check that out. We have a nice little Discord community. There's all sorts of things on our Patreon. Go over there. Uh, uh, do it. Do the thing. Yeah, you might even uh, find yourself a, another robot jocks to fight. Um, mm. Yeah, over territorial disputes in a, in a yeah. fictional future. Um, we also have a store. Head over to GameFillingEmployed.com. You can find a link to our Teespring store. We have all kinds of cool original artwork and designs. You can get on t-shirts, mugs, stickers, posters, all sorts of things. So slap your suitable flesh peepers onto that. Do it. Do it. All right. Say goodbye, everyone. Goodbye. Bye. Our music is produced by Chris Corlew. You can follow him on Twitter at at the Corlew, C-O-R-L-E-W, and find more music at shipwreckedsailor.bandcamp.com. 
Our channel artwork is produced by Michael Vincent Bramley. You can find more of his artwork at Instagram.com slash MV Bramley Art. Our episode artwork is produced by Justin Brown. You can follow him on Twitter at at Justin T. Brown and find more of his artwork at artnessbyjustinbrown.com and justinbrown.info.